Endless Times had a series uh, uh, outing the, 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 the best and the worst teachers, according to this model. And within a few days, one of the teachers committed suicide uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, so that this is a really controversial issue now that will spread across the nation uh, and New York. In the hearing that will be held in November, the judge will hold a hearing as to whether the city can do this, uh, will become a a, a flashpoint now, a major center uh, for this debate. And wouldn't it lead teachers to not want to have difficult students because they don't want to bring down their rating? Well, they themselves could get fired well, because they tried what, to help. Uh, what the consultant said that if you attempted to gauge performance along this line, there would be a gaming of the system, uh, as everyone would then try to make sure that that if their uh, children's test scores are publicized, that they don't have the most problematic kids in their classrooms. Uh, so it would really begin to uh, uh, bring a whole new uh, distortion to the whole education process. Well, we'll certainly continue to follow that as we move on now to another issue uh, in the military. Juan? Yes. Well, the military's 17-year-old don't ask, don't tell policy, which bans openly gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender people from joining the U.S. military, is back on the books. But based on a new directive from Defense Secretary Robert Gates, only five senior military officials will be able to discharge service members for violating the policy. The change makes it harder for the military to, re to remove openly gay troops. Defense Secretary Gates issued the memorandum Thursday authorizing only five senior officials to forcibly remove openly queer service members from the military. The decision had previously been in the hands of several more less senior military and civilian officials. We'll host a debate on whether the queer rights movement should be focused on repealing the Don't Ask, Don't Tell law. But first, we go to Lieutenant Dan Choi for the latest news. He is one of the most vocal critics of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Earlier this week, he filed papers to re-enlist in the military after being discharged earlier this year. Dan Choi, it's nice to see you with us. I just saw you the day after you got your papers, your discharge papers. That's right. We were at Netroots Nation. In Las and Vegas. We also met uh, Harry Reid. We told him that uh, he needs to do what he can to get rid of this policy and law. Uh, it's been a long year. It's been quite a roller coaster and it is difficult to go on back to your chosen profession your team when your country discriminates against you openly and says that you cannot tell the truth about who you are and you realize all the pain this past year i think i spent a lot of it realizing and acknowledging some of the pain of having to stay in the closet, even in war, even in times where you're serving your country in the most harrowing circumstances, you're not allowed to have the full measure of integrity. And I don't think most people ever realize how painful that is until they're finally able to stop and realize what went on in their lives. And dealing with some of those issues has not been easy. It hasn't been easy telling my parents that I'm gay. My dad's a Southern Baptist minister, and my parents immigrated from Korea. My mom was an orphan in the Korean War. It's not easy communicating in all different kinds of topics with them, but this one in particular hasn't been easy. But still, when we found last week that Don't Ask, Don't Tell was struck down by the courts, and as far as I know about American government, that's the judicial branch, that's the judiciary branch's constitutional mandate. If there is an unconstitutional law, they strike it down. And for seven days, an entire week, there was no don't ask, don't tell. It was dead. There were no enormous consequences, like Secretary Gates mentioned. Nobody quit. Nobody protested. Uh, no homophobic harassment of gay soldiers happen. Uh, it's all the fear-mongering that happens uh, in many parts of the country, in many political circles uh, surrounding the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, were just on their face, invalidated. And now that President Obama has asked for a stay on that ruling and the injunction, it was, uh, it was very saddening. It was, it was hurtful to me and to people who were in the military that came out or 
wanted to have that full measure of integrity. It wasn't easy to join back up and go to that recruiting station. But when I realized that you know, the real victims of Don't Ask, Don't Tell are not the, soldier, the gay soldiers that get kicked out, it's really all of America that's the victim of this policy. And when we signal to the rest of the world that our country, even though we say equal justice under the law, that we're the land of the free and the home of the brave, uh, that doesn't necessarily apply to some of our citizens. So President Obama now, while he says he's against Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, it's his government, it's his Justice Department that has appealed this decision. That's right. And they don't need to. They fulfilled their mandate, the Department of Justice. All they needed to do was put on a court and trial. Many people, legal scholars, have shaken their heads, scratched their heads, wondering what this president is doing. His rhetoric indicates that he wants Don't Ask, Don't Tell repealed. Uh, he hasn't said that it's unconstitutional. Well, the courts have done that, and that's their job. President Obama, as a legal scholar, as a constitutional law professor, he should know better. The um, president has no obligation to defend, uh, with such a full-throated effort, the uh, discriminatory and unconstitutional policies. Uh, the courts have done the heavy lifting for him, and his policies, uh, his desires to get rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, have essentially been done. We're also joined in San Francisco by the lesbian anti-war activist and writer Matilda Bernstein Sycamore. She's argued celebrating the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell only makes progressive movements in this country complicit with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan. Matilda Bernstein Sycamore is the author, most recently, of a novel called So Many Ways to Sleep Badly, an editor of That's Revolting, Queer Strategies for Resisting Assimilation. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Matilda. Um, can you talk about your response to the controversy around Don't Ask, Don't Tell right now? Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for hosting this debate on the show. Um, Dan Choi talks about all of America being a victim of the policy of excluding openly gay soldiers in the military, but all of the world is a victim of the U.S. military. So if we have to look at one culprit for all of the problems that are going on in the entire world, that would have to be the U.S. military. And as a queer movement, what we need is a movement for gender, sexual, social, political, and cultural self-determination for queers in this country, for everyone in this country, and for everyone all over the world. We do not need to support the U.S. war machine, which is busy plundering indigenous resources and fighting at least three wars right now, you know, for corporate profiteers. And Dan Choi might know that, you know, uh, in the news lately, uh, there's been a lot of coverage about an epidemic of queer teen suicides. And this, of course, is an epidemic that's been going on for generations. But what, what the fight for Don't Ask, against Don't Ask, Don't Tell is telling our queer youth, they're saying, well, don't kill yourselves now. Wait. And you can enlist in the military and go abroad and kill and terrorize people of color all over the world. So that is not a social justice struggle. And if we need to support any soldiers, the soldiers we need to support are the soldiers Daniel Ellsberg was talking about before, the soldiers who are, who are releasing classified documents to bring down the U.S. war machine. You know, we need to support people like Camilla Mejia, who you have on the show all the time, you know, who talk about why they chose, you know, to leave the U.S. military and fight against all these unjust wars. Uh, Dan Choi, uh, your response. But I also like to add that this is not uh, this debate we've had uh, in, in other contexts before, when with the Dream Act, as in, as immigrant okay. students have attempted to uh, to get the Dream Act passed, and uh, and others saying, well, but the Dream Act would also uh, facilitate more immigrant youth going into the military. Uh, your response to the, the this critique? Well, I think Matilda points brought up. Uh, you know, I appreciate the passion, and I appreciate uh, the directions and the opinions that are voiced. I want people to understand, though, when queer people join 